The isolating woods of North America are often said to be just as mysterious as much as they hold danger. Deadly creatures lurking under the canopy of needles in the furthest reaches of the continent go unnoticed from human eyes. These unknown entities, while capturing our imaginations, are beings who should be avoided at all costs. They are not friendly. They do not wish to interact with us humans unless it involves the atrocious act of making us their next meal. For centuries, people have been steadily disappearing when venturing into the wilds. Missing 411 cases have only grown over the years. With scarce evidence ever being brought to light, it has caused the public to wonder, what exactly is transpiring in the darkest reaches of our forests? Is the answer as simple as people getting lost, unable to find their way back to the trail they wandered off from? Or could one of the more sinister inhabitants of the woods have played a role in average people like you and me vanishing without a trace? I'm your host, Jordan Hopkins. Thank you so much for your patience during my hiatus. And as always, welcome back to the Moonlight Lore Podcast. Have you ever found yourself in the forest, wondering to yourself if you were truly alone? Perhaps you've gone hiking at some point, maybe have gone camping deep in the interior of your favorite woodland region. We often like to believe we were safe during those outings. Nothing dreadful may have happened during those times you were out, which may, in turn, lower your guard in the future when you decide to immerse yourselves in nature once more. But what if you were never really alone during those times? What if, beyond our own sight or past the perimeter of light from your roaring campfire, there was something watching you, waiting, preparing for the moment you decide to explore off the beaten path or remove yourself from the safety of your company? You can never truly know what may be lurking nearby, especially when it's an expert at remaining unseen. The creature I'm referring to is one of ancient folklore, one that is said to roam the woods in search of prey one that has taken a particular liking to the taste of human flesh. Like the fearsome mountain lions, they're silent stalkers, experts in following their prey and suppressed movement. Akin to the powerful grizzly, they exhibit the brawn and hardiness that allow them to drag their captured meals off into the unknown. And similar to the ferociousness of wolves, it tears apart their captives in the most inhumane way possible as to quench their lust for blood. The Hide Behind, as whimsical of a name as it might have, is indeed one of the most fearsome predators who call the woods of North America their home. Similar to the cryptid known as Sasquatch, North America's most famous monster, the Hide Behind rivals its ominous appearance as it walks fully erect on two powerful clawed feet and stands at the same height of a fully grown man. Although quite slender, a trait which allows it to take cover behind the various trees it may use while stalking their prey, it has a body completely covered in a thick black pelt, sprouting from the top of its head all the way to the tip of its long tail. The perfect disguise while hunting under the moonlight, its face is completely covered in hair, making it very difficult for any unfortunate soul who spots one to be able to determine if it's facing away or uncontrollably eyeing up their potential next meal. In truth, though, the hide-behind folklore claims the beast only eats once every seven years, which may spell safety for some, but in reality, it's still a threat. While it has the patience to stalk its prey and only consume the flesh of man every seven years, it won't hesitate to strike if the opportunity presents itself. The delectable taste of intestines is its favorite food, so sometimes it may not be able to resist the chance to devour one's bowels. The fate that followed a hide-behind attack was an unbearable fear many of the logging and lumber communities would hold. 19th century lumberjacks in particular had a truly difficult time conducting their work in the woods, and the hazards of the job were only made worse by having to check over their shoulders every moment or so, lest the hide-behind was approaching. Every once in a while, when a lumberjack failed to return to camp near the end of the day or wound up missing completely, 
it was suspected the hide-behind had claimed another victim. Hundreds of tales would be shared around roaring campfires, warning of the danger lurking beyond the campsite. The hide-behind became a constant threat, and with that threat came stories of encounters with the creature. One such tale occurs in the early months of 1885, when lumberjacks stormed the Michigan forest, brandishing their sharpened axes and hungry saws. This group from an unnamed logging camp set out in the early hours every morning, only to return as the sun dipped below the horizon. It was a dangerous game they played, roaming the woods in the twilight hours, hoping to make it back to camp before the darkness of the night overtook them. Most would make it back on time, others would trickle in slowly as the moon rose overhead, but on rare occasions, one or two individuals might never come back at all. Whatever the fate had become of these men was only known to those men themselves. Some rumors say the transient nature of lumberjack work harbored many who would be there one day, then disappear down the road the next in search of a new job. However, the men who failed to return back to camp at the end of the day were not wandering freelancers. They were men who had families, who had a career of felling the mightiest of trees. For them to disappear of their own volition just was not in their character. Over the years, the mystery lingered in the air, dancing on the wind like the echoes of the morning songbirds who woke the burly men from their bunks for another day of work. One man, Henry Linden, found himself ensnared in this very scenario. Like his colleagues, the stiffness he felt as a result of sleeping in the wooden bunks at night, mixed with the strenuous work they had done the previous day, caused aches to shiver through his bones, pleading for a day of rest to recuperate. Sadly, they had a job to do, and Henry fell in line with the rest of the camp's lumberjacks, who herded into the woods, walking their daily march. It was not unusual for the lumberjacks to break off from the main group in pursuit of untouched timber. Typically, when men would venture out, groups of two were common as to avoid becoming lost or act as a deterrent to animal attacks. Often, though, this practice was ignored. Henry was a man who typically tried his hardest to follow the rules, but found it rather difficult as of late due to an accident the week prior. His friend, Andrew Smith, had the misfortune of breaking his leg after losing concentration and standing where he really shouldn't have been. Since then, Henry had to stay near the larger group, lending his hand where he was needed. But this practice grew tiresome for the large man. He wasn't one to make idle chit-chat with those who he didn't consider a close friend, so naturally he longed for the ability to work alone. It was a particularly chilly morning when Henry and his crew journeyed into the wilderness. The birds had been quiet, likely huddled away waiting for warmer hours to arrive with the rising sun, but this caused the forest to fall into an eerie silence that permeated into the men's very souls. There was an unnatural stillness that they were unfamiliar with. No matter, they hadn't traveled an hour into the forest only to turn around because of a little uneasiness. As per usual, the men swiftly got to work and spent the remainder of their morning splitting the fallen timber from the previous day's work. Henry, still longing to find solitude, waited for his moment. As everyone broke for lunch, he decided to take advantage of the distraction to find a new spot where he could work in relative peace. He knew the area well and knew where he would not be burdened by such constant small talk from the others. Packing up his tools and lunch, he stealthily snuck away from the main group, disappearing into the brambles and thickets of the forest. As he smiled, proudly thinking to himself how clever he was, he made his way further from the main logging site and found a patch of forest that suited his needs. A sunny clearing nearby provided him a tranquil spot to eat his lunch as he enjoyed the warmth of the afternoon sun in seclusion. It was turning out to be a perfect day. Upon clearing out the remains of his meal from his metal lunchbox, Henry stretched, relieving his aching bones one last time before heading back into the dense forest to begin the second half of his workday. A few hours of cutting and sawing passed when Henry finally began to feel that oh-so-familiar feeling he felt nearing the end of each day. His strength had been draining faster with each passing year, and in his older age, he found he couldn't keep up with the younger men as much as he used to. He often found himself taking more breaks than the others, and it was during one of these short recesses he thought he may have spotted something rather odd. He could have sworn he saw another person standing off in the distance, watching him. But as he wiped the sweat from his brow and the sawdust from his eyes, they focused on his surroundings only to reveal nothing. 
Everything was as it was moments before. The woods were still, nothing moved. He thought to himself that perhaps due to his fatigue, he may have been seeing things. Though, it looked so real. He could have sworn he saw a humanoid figure dart behind one of the trees off in the distance. He called out, beckoning whoever may have been out there to reveal themselves and come forwards. Henry gripped his axe just in case, but stood motionless as he waited. Nobody came. Still, he couldn't shake this feeling that he was now being watched by something. Whether it be a person or wild animal, he was probably smart to head back to the main group now. As he bent down to gather his tools at his feet, a snap of a branch in the direction he thought he saw something brought his attention back to the area he had seen the figure. Again, nothing was there. Sticks resting on the forest floor don't break on their own. Something had to have stepped on it, breaking it in two. Henry had no doubt what he had heard. A little quicker now, he gathered his belongings and began walking away at a quickened pace, growing more unnerved by the second. Hearing another snap of a branch behind him forced him to turn around as quickly as he could to spot whatever it was that was now following him. And there he saw it. A tall, slender body of a hairy creature caught in the open. It stood there, staring back at Henry, the two frozen in a never-ending standoff. He knew what was standing before him. He had heard the stories countless times before in his younger years of being a lumberjack. The hide behind was a dangerous predator, and once it had fixed its sights on someone, escape was very rare. Henry didn't know what to do. The thick forest foliage made it nearly impossible to back out of the woods at any reasonable pace. He couldn't turn around or take his eyes off the creature because if he did, it would surely strike. He was trapped. Off in the distance, he could still hear the buzzing of saw blades and hacks of axes. Yelling for help was out of the question. The others would never hear him over the noise. He only had one option. Walk backwards with his eyes glued to the entity in front of him and try to make it back to the others or camp before nightfall. With it being so early in the year, as well as being the end of the workday, Nighttime would rapidly set in. Henry was growing more nervous by the second. There was no way he was going to make it to safety in a reasonable time frame before darkness came. Once it did, and he could no longer see the hide behind, it could move closer and closer as it pleased, until it could finally reach him with its clawed paws. As he slowly backed away, expanding the distance between the two of them, he watched the sun dip down below the tree line, casting the forest floor in shadow. He was still able to clearly see the creature standing motionless among the trees, but when he walked backwards into a patch of thick foliage and had nowhere to go, he realized he would need to take his eyes off the hide behind in order to keep retreating. For only a split second, Henry drew his eyes to his side and searched for an exit route that would take him around the bushes. He plotted his path, then quickly turned back to face his pursuer, expecting it to have moved closer. But it was gone, disappearing among the brambles and trunks of the forest. He could still feel those beady eyes on him, though. He knew the creature hadn't left him. He wasn't that lucky. Peering in the direction it had been, he surveyed each tree, knowing from past stories that it would use the woods to its advantage and hide behind the large trunks. The shadows cast by the towering evergreens did well in preserving its hiding place, its dark fur blending in with their environment. When Henry's hope began to fill his heart that maybe the creature had moved on, He'd readied himself once more to follow its example. Although, now knowing the hide behind was lurking nearby, he became extra cautious. He could no longer hear his fellow lumberjacks working in the distance, which told him they had likely headed back to camp while he was focused on the creature. He turned slowly to begin the trek back, and all seemed fine once more. Until finally, after several minutes of walking, he heard yet another twig snap behind him. The sun was nearly set by this point, and Henry didn't have much time left, but his curiosity gnawed at his mind. He needed to see how far away it was, how close he was to certain death. He spun on his toes, hoping to catch his stalker in the open, but alas, he was too slow and only caught his bushy black tail ducking behind a tree just a mere 30 feet away. It was far closer than it was before. Henry couldn't afford to take his eyes off the tree it was hiding behind. He had to continue walking backwards to widen the gap and ensure the hide behind wasn't going to creep any closer. The cold air drifting through the forest did little to prevent the icy sweat from accumulating on his forehead. Sweat that wasn't born of heat, but fear. The next hour could be his last and he knew it. 
Henry stumbled slowly backwards, praying the fading sunlight lasted long enough for him to at least get close to camp. If he was able to widen the gap and he managed to draw near the perimeter of the bunkhouse, he'd try sprinting the rest of the way and hopefully manage to outrun the creature before it caught him. With every turn, he was forced to put tree after tree between him and the hide behind. It may have been a good idea to put these obstacles in the way of it were it any other creature, but the hide behind took advantage of its surroundings. Every time Henry moved past and around a tree, the hide behind would creep closer to him by ducking behind every trunk. The gap Henry desperately needed to be widened never changed. The two were in a stalemate. Suddenly, a rogue tree root protruding from the ground captured Henry's ankle. He fell to the forest floor. The hide behind darted towards him, using the opportunity to come only a few feet away before it stopped in his tracks once Henry opened his eyes. It nearly stood over him. The intimidating hairy creature looked as tall as the trees around them. Henry wondered why it hadn't struck yet. Why hadn't it killed him? Was it just playing with its food? Did it enjoy the chase? The sadistic reasoning eluded Henry as he slowly crawled backwards in the dirt, still making sure not to take his eyes off it. But then, something changed. The quiet evening forest erupted in a deep laughter, a clear sign that the hide behind fully intended on attacking soon. But something else echoed from the forest. The distant sound of yelling. It wasn't coming from the monster in front of him, it was coming from behind, in the direction of camp. His ears recognized it almost instantly once he realized it was coming from a human source. The foreman, a typically calm and collected man who had previously shared the story of the hide behind in the past, was frantically calling out Henry's name. Henry didn't dare turn away from his adversary, but he did scream at the top of his lungs, begging to God that those who were looking for him would be able to hear. Sure enough, the sounds of movement cutting through the forest began to grow, and with it, the annoyance of the hide behind began to as well. Refusing to turn away, Henry eyed up the creature before him. He stood to his full height, imitating the intimidating stance of the monster. Knowing backup was quickly approaching, Henry felt a new burst of bravery. He reached for a heavy stick on the ground while holding eye contact, screamed a battle cry at the top of his lungs, and threw the branch at its hairy head. The creature was forced to finally move while being watched, which in turn broke the spell. The hide behind, now knowing it was outnumbered by Henry's fast approaching reinforcements, took off from the scene, darting swiftly past the trees and out of sight all in a single moment. It was as if it had never even been there. The quiet forest ambience came flooding back into Henry's ears, the soft creaks of the treetops bending in the soft breeze, the hooting of distant owls as they readied for another night of hunting, and most prevalent of all, the heavy sighs of relief bursting from the lungs of Henry as he realized how long he had been holding his breath. The only clue of the monster's presence was the disturbed forest floor that revealed the path on which it ran. Henry stood bewildered by his experience. When his foreman crashed through the foliage behind him, only then did the man dare turn his back to the forest to face his savior. By the soft glow of the warm lantern his boss held, his ashen face told Henry he knew what had happened, what had been stalking him. Without a word, the man silently handed him a flask of whiskey. Henry hadn't realized how much he was actually shaking due to the experience, but grabbed the small metal container regardless. As the folklore instructs, if one were to consume alcohol, it was said to repel the hide behind. The smell and taste was unbearable to the creature and would prevent it from attacking and eating you. The two men headed back for camp. They were only but a short distance away, both partaking in quick gulps of the strong beverage. Henry had a difficult time not peering over his shoulder every other second, terrified the hide behind was still after him. As his boss set his hand on Henry's shoulder, inaudibly telling him that he was safe now, he couldn't help but notice how different the forest seemed to him. The woods seemed darker, evil almost. As gnarled branches closed up the unknown behind him, he could have sworn he had seen a pair of glowing yellow eyes emerge from the shadows, eyes that stared directly into his very soul eyes that disappeared nearly a second after Henry had made contact with them. Like the legend says, once a hide behind has picked out its prey, there is very little that will stop it from taking what it wants. Any information of Henry's life stops there. A mysterious, obscure character in the books of forest lore who never made waves in the endless pool of history. Perhaps he retired from the logging business after his experience, 
Maybe he continued working in the forest, felling trees, checking over his shoulder every minute or so, living a paranoid life. Or perhaps the hide behind eventually was able to claim its prey, and Henry inexplicably disappeared one day, leaving behind nothing but his unnerving story. We may never know the real fate of this man, and we may never know if his story was at all true or not, but what we do know is that in the deepest, darkest regions of our most remote forests are creatures who creep through the trees unnoticed. These monsters have sinister motives, their seclusion a testament to their aversion towards humanity. So be careful next time you decide to take the plunge into the wilderness. If you feel a pair of beady black eyes on you at any point, Look around at your surroundings, check the trees. There may be something lurking nearby, something that wishes to feast on your very flesh. The Hide Behind is a truly great example of classic North American folklore. In the past, I've done episodes on Sasquatch, the Dungarvan Whooper, or other ominous beasts, but The Hide Behind has always been one that I found to be rather fascinating. It's not likely to be a real creature, but to the early loggers of the late 18 and 1900s, it was a very real threat. Stories of The Hide Behind may have been used as explanations for odd or terrifying noises those early lumberjacks heard echo through the forest at night. The early accounts testify that the creature was among the largest and most powerful animals to roam the forest, despite the fact it was said to hide behind trees and avoid human eyes. Perhaps the strong, burly men at these camps needed an adversary of sorts, something to be afraid of. It was a tradition in the early logging camps for the men to gather in the evenings and entertain one another with intense fables and astonishing myths related to the woods. What better way to hold your colleagues' attention, to strike fear in your fellow lumberjack, than to share incredibly unnerving tales of the hide-behind lurking just outside of camp, waiting for one of them to draw near, only to die a brutal, horrific death. Fear of the unknown is natural for us humans. Yes, bears and wolves can be quite frightening, but when it comes down to it, when facing an unknown creature in the isolated forest, could you be prepared for that encounter? How could you be? A monster bent on the idea of hunting you down, feasting on your entrails and bones. Bears and wolves, they sometimes prefer to avoid humans, but a creature who specifically hunts us forces us to realize we are not invincible. We are not at the top of the food chain as we so often like to believe. So, could there have been any truth behind the legend? As many have suspected over the years, the hide behind could have been an imaginary creature simply created to keep the men vigilant to their surroundings, Working in the forest comes with a plethora of hazards. If the men were on the lookout for the hide-behind, they also would have been able to spot dangerous animals like the bears or wolves, or even potentially be aware of a fallen tree and keep out of its path. The hide-behind was a way to avoid vulnerability while working in such a dangerous environment. Or maybe the hide-behind was created to explain sudden or mysterious disappearances of lumberjacks. It may have been a way for the men to have found closure when one of their friends died or became lost on the job site. But whatever might have been the case, the high behind is undoubtedly one of the most disturbing creatures of American folklore. Once again, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for your patience while I got my ducks in a row during my hiatus. I'm not quite sure if I'm 100% ready to delve back into a bi-weekly schedule just yet, but I do want to start getting things back to normal as quickly as possible. I do have some personal projects in the works right now that I'd like to still dedicate my free time to, so the release of episodes may be a bit sporadic for a bit. Just keep your eyes out on the feeds or follow me on Instagram to hear any news regarding new episodes, and that should keep you up to date. During this hiatus, I hope you've all been doing well. I've missed sharing spooky tales and horrifying history segments with you guys. Like I've previously said, the podcast is not going anywhere. At most, it'll just have breaks here or there, maybe on occasion. 
If you guys are ever in the mood for new content though, be sure to check out the Moonlight Lore Patreon. It's got several episodes the public doesn't get to hear, so if I do happen to go on another break, it'd be a good place to find new content, as I will keep uploading on there during the breaks. Also, if enough people donate there, then I'm able to do this full-time eventually. I can almost guarantee that any breaks in the future will be either non-existent or incredibly short. Also, eventually, once my personal projects are completed, those who are on the Patreon will get early access to them, as well as free merch in the future. Now, don't ask me when that might happen. I'm thinking maybe at the end of this year or early next year I'll be done with some stuff, so stay tuned for that future update. Um, I'm not quite prepared to reveal anything just yet, but I'm personally looking forward to when I can share it. It's really exciting to me. So, as always, in the meantime, between now and next episode, if you guys could follow the podcast, share it with your friends and family, leave a five-star review, all that good stuff, I would really appreciate it. Uh, continue to take care of yourselves. Feel free to reach out to me by email or on Instagram with any questions or comments. I absolutely love hearing from you guys. And hopefully I'll be able to see you all fairly soon again uh, in the next episode, in two weeks hopefully. So uh, until then, take care guys, and I'll see you next time.